Grade 7, Quiz 10, Directions. Read the passage and answer the questions that follow. Santorio, Santorio, and the Thermometer by Robert Mulcahy. Santorio, Santorio, March 1561 to February 1636, was a physician and professor. Paragraph 1. Galileo built the first working thermoscope. He took a small glass tube filled with air and rubbed it in his hands to warm it up. Then he turned the tube over and put the open end in a small bowl of water. As the air in the tube cooled, water rose into the tube. <laughs> 2. Since cooler air takes up less space than warm air, there would be no more space for the water as the air in the tube cooled. The water rising slowly in the tube showed that the air was cooling. When Galileo rubbed the glass tube again, the air inside would heat up, and the water level in the tube would slowly drop because the warmer air took up more space than the cooler air. Although the increase and decrease could be seen, the thermoscope could not measure the degree of the change in a mathematical way. Paragraph 3. Despite this lack of precision, Galileo had constructed a wonderful invention, yet he considered to be a useless toy and even called it a little joke. As far as anyone knew, the famous phys physicist, mathematician, and astronomer never tried to adapt the thermoscope into a device to measure the temperature of the human body. Paragraph 4. It was Santorio Santorio, the physician, who had devoted his life to measurements, who realized that he could use the thermoscope to measure body temperature. He made two important changes that transferred Galileo's thermoscope into the thermometer. Paragraph 5. Santorio's first in innovation was making a glass tube into which a patient could breathe. The person's breath would heat up the air, which would push the water level down inside the tube. If the person had a fever, the water level in the tube would be pushed down farther because the patient's breath would be hotter. <laughs> Santorio colored the water in the tube green so the doctors could see it more easily. Paragraph 6. Secondly, Santorio added regularly spaced marks or ticks, tick marks to his device. This may appear to be a very minor addition to Galileo's thermoscope but it was actually a very important one. With the tick marks, Centorio could get a reading of a patient's temperature and compare this reading to the temperatures of other patients. Or he could compare the reading to earlier readings taken on the same patient. Centorio knew the thermometer would enable doctors to determine a person's temperature exactly, making both diagnosis and treatment more precise. Paragraph 7. After inventing the thermometer, Centorio built a device to measure a person's pulse rate. Today, people can find their pulse rates without special instruments. They only have to count how many times their pulse beats with a certain period of time. Since the clocks of Centorio's day had no second hand, measuring time exactly was difficult. <laughs> Paragraph 8. To solve this problem, Centorio built a pendulum a weight hanging on the end of a piece of a string. Then he matched the swing of the pendulum to a person's pulse rate by changing the length of the cord on which the weight was hanging. He improved this device by tying a knot in the cord and measuring the position of the knot on a horizontal scale. Centorio called this device the pulsilogium. Pulsilogium. Eight. Among the many other devices, Centonio, Centorio built was a hydroscope, which measured the amount of water and air to help patients who were paralyzed or had to remain immobile while healing. He invented a bag filled with water in which they could lie and bathe without moving from their bed. He also invented an instrument for removing bladder stones. Paragraph 10. Centorio spent so much time treating patients and inventing that his students at the university accused him of not devoting enough time to his teaching. 
Although these charges were dismissed, Santoria was bitter over the criticism and retired from the university in 1624. As a reward for his years of outstanding work, however, the Vientin government continued to pay him his university sal salary for the rest of his life. 11. In 1630, Venetian officials in Santorio to organize the efforts of doctors in their city to combat a plague. That same year, Santorio was elected president of the Venetian College of Physicians. February 2nd, 1936, Santorio Santorio died from a urinary tract disease and was buried in the church of the Servi in Venice. When the church was destroyed in 1812 during the Napoleonic Wars, Santori Santorio's skeleton was savaged, salvaged, and his skull is now in the Museum of the University of Padua. A wealthy and respected man, Santorio had never married. As he had no family, he willed his money to endow schools and fund other charities and scientific endeavors. Paragraph 1. Paragraph 3 of the text, what is the meaning of the phrase lack of precision? A. Lack of exactness. B. Lack of flexibility. C. Lack of curiosity. D. Lack of value. Number 2. Which statement best describes how paragraphs 1 through 3 contribute to the development of ideas in the text? A. They reveal to the reader that Galileo and Centurio both felt they were not appreciated by the scientific community. B. They explain how Galileo's work served as the foundation of Centurio's inventions of the thermometer. C. They suggest that the experiments conducted during Galileo's time had less scientific importance than those of Centurio's time. D. They prove that Galileo should be given full credit for Centurio's many inventions. Number three. Because there's no second hands on clocks during Centurio's time, it was difficult to determine a patient's pulse. How does Centurio solve this problem? A. He created a bag filled with water to keep patients comfortable while lying still. B. He added tick marks to Galileo's device to read and compare patients' temperatures. C. He developed a pendulum with a weight and cord to measure rate. D. He invented a hydroscope to determine how much water is in the air. Number 4. Which sentence from paragraph 6 does the author show his point of view? A. Secondly, Centurio added regularly space marks or tick marks to his device. B. This may appear to be a very minor addition to Galileo's thermoscope, but was actually a very important one. C. With the tick marks, Centurio could get a reading of the patient's temperature and compare this reading to the temperatures of other patients. D. Or he could compare the reading or, or to earlier readings taken on the same patient. 5. In the final paragraph of the passage, the author makes the claim that Centurio was a respected man. Which fact from the passage best supports the statement? A. Although these charges were dismissed, Centurio was bitter over the criticism and retired from the university in 1624. B. On February 22, 1636, Centurio Centurio died from a urinary tract disease and was buried in the church of the Servi in Venice. C. When the church was destroyed in 1812, during the Napoleonic Wars, Centurio's skeleton was salvaged and his skull is now in the museum at the University of Padua. D. As he had no family, he willed his money to the endow schools and fund other charities and scientific endeavors. Number 6. What does the text reveal about Centorio Centorio's character? Make a claim about what kind of person he was and defend your claim using at least two details from the text to support your response. I miss you all, and I hope you're having a great week. I will see you soon. Bye.